necessarily be prepared for. <laughs> so when Dirty first asked me to speak and eulogize for his mother, my first reaction was probably the same as a lot of you all. He ain't no preacher. <laughs> and I was like, wait, I ain't no preacher. <laughs> if you know Dirty, when Dirty done made his, Dirty was my pledge father, so when you know Dirty and Dirty done made his mind up about a thing, right? A thing. He sticks with it. it becomes a thing. Even if it only makes sense to him. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to ask myself why he would choose me to be the individual to make an attempt as such an insurmountable task of putting a summation together of the totality of such a great woman existence on this planet. Mm. Let's be clear at the gate. Nobody, and I mean nobody, can summarize such a great human being that has traversed this life for 88 years, almost 89, in 15 minutes, 15 hours, right. or 15 years. If it took 88 years for Esther Jean Cream to write her legacy, then it would take at minimum that amount of time to express the true totality of her place on the planet. And it may even take 88 more years for the people's lives that she has touched to express how they feel. So once I came to terms with that dirty one backing down from his decision <laughs> for me to do the service, I said to myself, self, of course you know I had to answer myself, huh? <laughs> What you gonna do? Mm -hmm. Then it hit me like a ton of bricks. I don't have to be a preacher mm -hmm. to have an open conversation with you about the life of such a great woman mm -hmm. seen through the eyes of her baby boy. Mm -hmm. Many may still say, well, Dave, you still need to meet, criteria, meet a certain criteria to even be eligible to speak on such a woman. So if I need to have lost a mother to be eligible, check, 1992. Yeah. If, well, she was like a father to a lot of us, check, 1993. Well, to be eligible, you have to have lost a sibling, check, lost five of those. Well, you have to have lost a friend, lost plenty of those, some tragic. So you are absolutely right in your assessment. I am not qualified to preach a eulogy, but I am uniquely qualified to have an open conversation with you today about a great woman that lived a life that was so great, <coughs> you and many others that wanted to be here, regardless of why they couldn't, would not pass up the opportunity to pay, to pay your final respects to that woman in this form. All right. Now, when you think about it, a black woman born in 1935 in Arkansas, during a time when things were not so great for black women, not to say that they are great now in 2024, but in 35, they were a lot worse. Uh -huh. However, when you take your mind back to 1935 and look at what was happening in America, 
especially in the South for a black woman. Mm -hmm. I was born in Wynn, Arkansas, raised in Forest City back in the late 60s and 70s. I know how it was, the experience was for me. Can you imagine what it was for a black woman back then? Mm -hmm. Now, the same woman mustered up the courage to take a journey up north to Chicago in 1955 mm -hmm. to try and make a better life for herself and start a family mm -hmm. and give them a better opportunity to be successful. Mm -hmm. And because of the love that she had for her family, according to Dirty now, mm -hmm. she pulled a Harriet Tubman. Mm -hmm. She went back to Arkansas and got her sisters and brothers. Now, you got to think about it. Now, this was a young woman. Yes, yes, yes. Right? And the time and the energy and the courage that she took to move hundreds of miles away, get a job, save her money, go back to get her siblings, then the only thing that you can say is that a greater power was working in her. That's it. That's it. And for the sake of this conversation, we're going to call that power love. Because love is the only thing that you can say that can justify the struggle that a mother goes through for the sake of their beloveds. In talking with Dirty, I asked him his fondest memory of me Jean, mean Esther Jean Gray. <laughs> now, Dirty made me call her that, y'all. Don't think that I Dirty made me call her that. trying to be disrespectful. <laughs> he talked about how his mom got paid every week at CPS, and they would go for hot dogs on Friday. And on Saturday, they would walk 26th Street and catch the bus to go make groceries. Now, y'all know that's some country language, right? No, well, we got to make, make groceries. groceries. That's what I say. I go shopping. I go make groceries. We got to make groceries. That's, that's right. Side, so that's holy, holy city, city, baby. <laughs> West side. You know. <laughs> now, look at the wisdom of me, Esther Green. She walked them down 26th Street to subliminally put in his head Either you are going to monitor the people in 2016 California, or are you going to be in 2016 California? <laughs> now, I'm giving you the blueprint on how to stay out of 2016 California. <laughs> Work hard, listen, pay your bills, right? Provide, for you, provide and love your family. Be true to yourself, family and God, and many more pearls of wisdom. But if you choose not to follow those pearls of wisdom, that is on you, and you will suffer the consequences. Then I asked him, what was one of the rules that you could not violate in mean Esther Jean Green house? He said you couldn't come in the house after 10 o'clock. <laughs> if you do, stay outside. Once that screen dope, he ain't say door. Once that screen dope <laughs> is locked, got a gas pump. <laughs> so I asked him, did you ever try it? Immediately, yes. <laughs> did she lock you out? Immediately, yes. <laughs> then I said, and then he said, and when she locked me out, she came outside and took my clothes. <laughs> Wow. Said, I bought these. He was like, it was cold. Right? <laughs> so I asked him, did you ever do it again? Immediately, never. <laughs> it's amazing how cold could change your reality, right? <laughs> so if you can reflect back on the lessons that Esther Jean gave <laughs> Is trying to communicate to me. If you can look past her imperfections, her shortcomings, her faults, and see the true essence of what the universe put her on this planet to do, and if you could peel it back 
to its bare essence, what you will clearly see is that Esther Jean Green loved indiscriminately. Love don't always come in the form of gifts and smiles. Sometimes love comes in a harsh form. Mm -hmm. If you don't believe me, look at the sacrifice that God made for the world. 